Hey, uh, it's me. Um, I've been at school this week, so I've kind of dropped the boat a little bit. Here's the dog. Hello, the dog. Okay, <laughs> just stand there in front of me, are you? All right, you sit there. Okay, uh, dark is fascinating. Plop, having spent nearly all day was very lively that, sorry. Plop, having slept nearly all day was very lively that evening. Very lively and very hungry. He kept wobbling on the branch to where his father was roosting to see if by chance he were awake and ready to go hunting. Mr. Barnow was drawn up, tall and still. He seemed hardly to be breathing. Plop stretched up on tiptoe and tried to see into his father's face. What a strong curved beak he had. Daddy, are you awake? He said loudly. I'm hungry. Mr. Barnow did not open his eyes, but the beak moved. Go away, it said. I'm asleep. Plop went away obediently and then realised something and went back again. Daddy, you can't be asleep. You spoke. I heard you. You must have imagined it, said his father, still not opening his eyes. You spoke, said Plop. You're awake, so you can go hunting. He butted his father's tummy with his head. Come on, it's getting up time. Mr Barnow sighed and stretched. All right, all right, you horrible owlet. What time is it? He looked up at the sky. Suffering bats, it isn't even dark yet. I could have another half an hour. You right there, miss? He glared at Plop. Dash it, I'm going to have another half hour. I will not be bullied by an addled little daybird. Go away. You may wake me when it is dark, not before. Do you understand? He suddenly leaned forward until his huge beak was level with Plop's own little carpet tack. Plop could see two of himself reflected in his father's eyes. Uh, yes, Daddy, he said, backing away hurriedly. Good, said his father, drawing himself up to sleep again. Good day. Plop went back to, nest, to the nest hole to complain to his mother. A sleepy Mrs Barnow listened sympathetically. Well, dear, I should go and find out, I should go and find out more about the world if I were you. She said, look, there's a young lady down there. Why don't you go and talk to her? Plop peered down through the leaves. Standing a little way from the tree was someone wearing shiny black boots a bright red fur coat and a matching hat and what looked like a white beard. That's not a young lady, shrieked Plop. That's Father Christmas. And he fell off his branch in such a hurry that he forgot either to shut his eyes or to take a deep breath. He landed quite well considering, but lost his balance at the last moment and toppled forward onto his face. A gentle hand picked him up and set him the right way up again. Oh, you poor darling, said a sweet young voice. Are you all right? Plop looked up quickly. That voice didn't sound right. It wasn't a white beard. It was blonde hair. You're not Father Christmas at all, he said crossly. And I came down specially. I'm terribly sorry, said the young lady. And I'm not a darling. I'm a bar now. I'll tell you what, the Father Christmas lady said. May I draw a picture of you in my nature sketchbook? I haven't got a bar now in it. Me, said Plop. You really mean me? Yes, please. Perhaps you could pose on that low branch for me. Plop fluttered up to the branch and stood stifling to attention. The Father Christmas lady sat on a log and began to draw. I always carry my sketchbook about with me just in case I see something interesting, she said. The interesting barn owl drew himself up proudly like a soldier in a sentry box, but not for long. The young lady, the young lady looked up from her drawing to find that the barn owl had completely disappeared. Can I see, said a small voice down by her boot. Plop was jiggling up and down, trying to see what was on the pad. There's not much to see yet, she said. But all right, you can look. Plop looked. I'm not bald like that, he said indignantly. I haven't had time to get you properly dressed, said the young lady, and you've only given me one leg. I'm afraid a bald, one-legged barn owl is all there's going to be, unless you keep still. Plop tried very hard after that, and he only got down three or four times to see how she was getting on. He could hardly believe his eyes when it was finished. Is that really me? He said. I look just like Daddy. Well, almost. Yes, that's really you, she said. I keep one end of the book for animals and birds that come out in the daytime and the other end for night creatures. I've put you with them, of course. Oh, said Plop. Um, of course. All the most interesting ones are your end, the young lady said when 
the young lady went on. I think Dark is fascinating. I, uh, tell me about it, said Plot. Well, it was too late now to tell her that she had got him at the wrong end of the book. Hop up then, said the young lady, holding out a finger and taking Plop onto her lap. I'll show you what good company you're in. Look, here are some badges. Plop looked at the big brown and white animals with stripes down their noses. Funny faces they've got. That's so they don't bump into each other in the dark, explained the young lady. They can't see very well. She turned over the page. Ah, now, I think these are the most fascinating night creatures of all. Bats. You've got it the wrong way up, said Plop. The Father Christmas lady laughed. No, I haven't. That's how bats like to be when they're not fluttering about, hanging upside down by their feet. Go on, said Plop. Yes, really. And do you know, if you were a baby bat, your mother would take you with her wherever she went, clinging to her fur. You get lots of rise. Oh, I'd like that, Plop said. Yes, but when you got too big to be carried, do you know what your mother would do? She'd hang you up before you went out. Hang me up, said Plop. Upside down. That's right. Now let's see what else we can find. She turned a few pages. Yes, here we are. Oh, Plop was not with her. He was rocking backwards and forwards on the low branch like one of those little wobbly men that you push. Every now and then he went a bit too far and had to waggle his wings to keep his balance. What are you doing? asked the young lady. I'm trying to be a bat, said Plop, but, I don't, but what I don't understand is how they begin. I can't get upside down. Perhaps it would be easier to be a hedgehog. <clears throat> said the young lady. When they're frightened, they roll themselves into a ball. Look, there's a picture of one. <clears throat> Plop hopped back onto her knee and inspected the hedgehog. His feathers could do with a bit of fluffing up, he said. Those aren't feathers, they're prickles. Very useful they are, too. A hedgehog can jump off quite a high fence without hurting himself because he makes himself into a prickly ball and just bounces. Very useful, said Plop. I wish I had prickles. He jumped off her lap and tried to roll himself into a ball. It was very difficult. I don't seem to have enough bends, he said. Suddenly he stopped rolling about and stayed still, listening. Then he rushed back to the young lady's lap and tried to bury himself in her coat. What's the matter, she said. <clears throat> it's a funny noise, he said. Over there. The young lady listened. There was a busy rustling sound coming from the dry leaves under the big tree. Why, I do believe it's a hedgehog, she said. Yes, here he is, look. Plop peered cautiously over the edge of her lap. A tiny pointed snout pushed its way through the leaves and then a small round creature scuttled across the ground in front of them. They never bother to move about quietly, the young lady whispered, because they know nobody would want to eat anything so prickly. Is he sure, said Plop. I'm so hungry I could eat anything. The hedgehog stopped dead and rolled himself into a tight ball. He must have heard you, the young lady said reproachfully. What a thing to say. Well, it's true, said Plop. I'm starving. Oh, of course, you'll be going hunting with your parents now that it's getting dark, won't you? I was forgetting you're a night bird. The night bird looked down at his toes. Well, I won't keep you, she went on, except would you mind doing something from, for me before you go? I would like to hear you screech. Plop didn't mind at all. He stuck out his <clears throat> chest and gave the most enormous eek he could possibly manage. <clears throat> Gorgeous, said the young lady. Plop, bow, bop, plop bobbed his funny little bow. Then he took off and circled round, eking all for all he was worth. The young lady waved and then with one final eek of farewell, Plop flew up to the landing branch. Well, said his mother, the father's Christmas lady you were right, it was a lady, says dark is fascinating. And what do you think, Plop? I, do st I still do not like it at all. But what do you think? The lady drew a picture of me. Well, that's very special, isn't it? Nobody has ever put me in a picture. And she says my screech is gorgeous. She does, does she? I, wonder what all that, I wondered what all that noise was about. Where's Daddy? Out hunting. Oh, jolly good. I could eat a hedgehog. I wouldn't recommend it, said his mother. <clears throat>